Yeah, okay, mind. okay. What if the giant ball of light the being showed Chris was a second sun orbiting our solar system? Ooh. The, that's the, a wild question. That's a really wild Feels question. Feels like Star Wars. Yeah. Dharma oh Crumb. He's got to uh, start referencing Star Wars every episode <laughs> it's now. It's too fresh. Like we got to get him did. off it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah like from the beginning. Did. Yeah. So this is Dharma Crumbs on Instagram. Thank you, Dharma Crumbs. Thank you. For Thank, the you. Thank you. So I do I do want to, um, the original question said the ball, the giant ball of light that Hathor showed Chris. That's not quite how mm. it happened. It was the beings. It okay. Wasn't. My dad didn't see the lady until 2012. Right. This was shown to him in in 2007. I've often wondered that, like, what is this thing? I mean, we've been talking about it since 2007 or more like 2008 when he had his regression and he and I have talked about it for many years. Like I remember when I was younger, do you remember when we were in high school and I got really into the Nibiru stuff? Cause everybody was oh, talking yeah. about 2012, yeah. 2012. And it was, it was everywhere in like, Kind of like underground mm. alien. Talking about the Anunnaki. Right, and, yeah. right. And I, I heard that from Chris for sure. He, yeah. He yeah. was very... And like, I don't buy that stuff anymore. I mean, yeah. na- it was it was natural that we would study that in the beginning because what material did we have out there to understand what we were going through? Mm. But like, they had this theory that there was a 10th planet that's in orbit. And I was like, well, what if it's that? But no, what I really think it is, is dad's like, it could be the sun. It could actually be the sun. And they're just showing him the sun or it could be like you know these these orbs are like different consciousnesses you know we we know this like the beings travel through the orbs and 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 they've even indicated that when we die our spirit goes into these orbs Mm -hmm. and they go back to the spirit world i often wondered what if that was some form of godlike consciousness like you know if there was some real energetic manifestation of a god force that's that's how i visualize it would be like just like a big version of an orb. Yeah, like like a star. Because it's mm-hmm. it's more it's it's more significant energy. Yeah. Yeah. And you've even talked about how like the sun is potentially like the kind of like father entity that you know other entities come from or maybe it's scientifically some, it is. Right. You right. Know? Yeah. So I mean that would be that would be pretty crazy if I feel like I don't know. I feel like it if I lean more towards them showing him that as a representation of the sun to drive home its significance. That's what that's what mm. dad's kind of thinking lately. Like it might actually just be the sun. They didn't say exactly what it was. Right. It was just a large, like golden, you know, yellowish, whatever sphere of light up in and space. I, I mean, the immediate human association with a giant yeah, golden yeah, yeah. sphere of light is the sun. Yeah. And there's also like countless other stories and other like UFO type um, encounters where they see like a portal mm. and there's an additional sky in the sky. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, what if it was that kind of situation too, where it was another portal to another sun type thing, uh-huh. like a different sun. So who said portal in the sun? My dad. Yeah. Neil Young. Neil Young, yeah, well, yeah. <clears throat> right, but the entities indicated to my dad that, that they they do travel through a portal in the sun. Yeah, they that there are some entities that come from there. So like, I think it's a realm. It's like yeah, like if if we if we at this point in evolution we are material. Be- we're part God, part physical, normal human. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We're we're truly hybrids in the sense that like our mother and in my understanding of things, our mother is this material realm we're born in her womb. We're born in earth. We're, we're born through the water, but also water is mostly earth. And you know, you think about duality and yang, you have the material and the spiritual, you have the light and the dark doesn't necessarily mean the dark is evil. It's just like the absence of the light, light or yeah. illumination. I tend to think of it like we're part God in the sense that our mother is this physical world and we have a body that is physical, but then our father is the spiritual world too. And we have a soul that is spiritual and it's like, if we're ascending to next levels of consciousness throughout the aeons, it makes sense that we would go to another realm. Maybe that's where we go from here. When we all collectively awaken, it's like, poof, the next game is in that reality over there. That's mm-hmm. a big ball of light. Now, mm-hmm. you know, that's just kind of how I think about it. But No, I see that. I like we, that. We, it, you know, it, it, if the evolution of consciousness is true... We can't stay here in the material plane forever. Yeah, of that's not. not how evolution works. It, it, it's too limiting. Right. It, it's too limit. Like we, like we were talking. You know, like our 
our consciousness will outgrow our body. Right. You know? So we, we yeah, that that is the logical conclusion. Like Akira, like uh-huh. the Jedi. Yes. Like so many other things in pop culture. It's like eventually, I think it's a metaphor for what actually happens to the collective human race. Like eventually we will grow past the need for being limited in a material body. Facts. Mm. Let's do another one. Heck yeah. Thank you. Let's go. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yes, great question. Going back to What was the, the name again? Um, Dharma crumbs. Thank you. Okay, this is a cool one. This is back to the Discord jar, and we are thanking Sean Davis, man. Sean Davis, man. Hey, Sean Davis has a sick metal band. Sick metal band. Let me let me verify the name on that. I'm so bad Please. with names, but uh, uh, thank you so much, Sean. Uh, keep on making that music. Abstract it's forms. Abstract forms. It's incredible. He writes cool all the guitar for it. Yes, and it's a smash. That dude writes. Sick riff. It's like our kind of mu- like genty metal, yeah. like heavier stuff, Love screamo it. type stuff. And this is a cool question. Question is, what if the universe is the result of energies or primordial entities communicating with one another? Like, what if this realm that we are in is a consequence of spoken word creating? Yes, like some sort of communication happening. Well, I mean, it's it seems just naturally true Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i i can't i can't sit here and tell you i don't believe any of that yeah Yeah. because what we talk about an interesting thing that has for some reason been coming up a lot lately is when we talk with people about like what are these entities you know i usually say like well think of like buddhism when you reach enlightenment you become a little buddha which is like one of those little orbs or whatever but then a lot of times people will be like, okay, well, what does that mean the lady is? Or what does that mean like some of these bigger, more significant entities are? They would be the primordial energies. That's what I'm the, saying. The, mm-hmm. the original mm-hmm. archetypal energies. It's like they... That we come from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's so hard to explain, but the way I see it is like, it's like a reflection of a concept in this realm. like. If, you know, the lady was a reflection of the concept of, like, love and compassion. Right. So that concept has always existed. Right. It had to have always existed from yeah. the very beginning and of time. And to add to this, now we're getting into Plato, how he had a whole theory called the theory of forms. And that was his theory. Mm. The, the form being truth, goodness, even numbers, love, those things that we know and we all agree means something plato was like well no they have a form in another reality what well, dude they have sounds, a soul that is as real as you and me that, that sounds like the greek gods that that yeah. sounds like like mythological gods you think about it in greek mythology every god is like the reason for something in the physical realm existing right yeah, yeah. they're just using they're telling a story with them but and you know when you get down into it esoterically they're just like primordial forces of nature exactly like the egyptians yeah and so yeah i think in a cool abstract way i mean it's really hard to pin your mind down to that concept because it's so abstract yeah but i think sean i think you're kind of hitting it right on the head like it i think that's what this realm inherently is is those those primordial ever-present like energies communicating and this is the consequence of it all well it's like most major religions around the world have some sort of description in their texts this like first there was the word yeah. or like it's brahma saying om or and then in the bible it's like first there was the word and then there was or no, first i don't remember how it goes in john it's like the word and the word was god the word was with god it's always this symbolism of the god force speaking but you know, to me, that sounds like vibration and frequency. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it also sounds like uh, Skyrim, like shouts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dragon shouts. meaning into something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. But 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 that's a deeper question too, because it's like, are they kind of subtly hint? You think about Skyrim, it's like they have this ancient dragon language that only people with a certain level of development in their soul who have incarnated with a certain ability can speak and summon the power of this language. To me, it sounds like the twilight language, Mm. which is the concept that there was an original language before the tower of Babel incident where we all had one language 
Could I have been. Know I had a name. That's. A it's cool called the name. Twilight language. It's yeah. a really cool name. Yeah, it is. You know, and Art. some people are like, <laughs> was it Latin? Was it Sanskrit? Was it? You know, they right. they don't know. Yeah. But that goes hard. Yeah. <laughs> good question, Sean. Hard. That was a really good one. Ryan's turn. All right. We're pulling from the OG jar. I like switching back and forth. Yeah. Like doing a regular yeah, one on yeah, Patreon. Yeah. 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 Picking baby. up what you're putting down. Oh, this is a long one. Yeah. Sorry. Um. Did you write in the purple pen? Sure did. So it's Twitter. Is that okay. the same guy? At no. At okay. Sean. Let me try to read this correctly. At Sean Fazlet. Does that sound something? Like? It it did have about that spelling. Fazlet. Yeah. <laughs> What the heck? <laughs> At Sean Fazlitt, what if time is happening simultaneously and the only difference is that different times are just vibrating a slightly different frequency? I'm guessing you put a period to abbreviate. Yes. A, a slightly different frequency. Ghosts are people in the past or future runs in the hours. I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like the timeline idea. Everything's running simultaneously. But to me, that also reads like, because um, obviously, you know, Abraham Lincoln is alive, but he's the most popular ghost ever. You know, like putting his boots on in the White House. I don't imagine he's still doing that. So I could see where that'd be like a timeline splice situation. If you view it like in a tree, it travels up the tree first and then it just stays. That kind of thing. Uh-huh. That's kind of how I imagine it. I visualized it that way. I think about it like, I think a really wonderful visual representation of this concept is, believe it or not, the Zack Snyder Um, Justice League Mm -hmm. okay. because it's the scene when the Flash is running through the Speed Force and there's this monologue going on in his head and while he's running through the Speed Force he's like rewriting reality and he says something to the I haven't seen it since the the Snyder Cut came out years ago but it was something to the effect of like you know you can change the past you can change the future be here now Mm. you know And, and like it didn't go into much more description than that but I thought it was cool how it was like he was changing how he viewed the past. He was changing the outcome he wanted for the future, but he was focused on being here right now and making the right choice and the karmic consequences unfolding to alter the future. Mm. But then the other symbolism, which is a little bit more ancient, that makes me like really think deeply about this concept is Odin and his ravens because they represent thought, which is the future, mm. Mm. and memory, which is the past. The past yeah. And I think that's some sort of... You can crack the door, Alex. My cat's going nuts. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Dee Dee. Come, Come on, on in, baby. She wants to join. She Bro. loves joining the podcast. Yeah, and you know what? If you even think about it from a scientific perspective, a lot of scientists describe um, time as like this spaghetti ball. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not it's, the web it's of like a, and Spider-Man. It's yeah. a locus. Perfect. It's a locus of reality. And, and my, this is just my interpretation. We are always presently experiencing a locus of reality where truly the only thing that's real is right now because dude i mean not a two mile horn i i'm just like i'm literally turning 30 in two days you know and it's a weird feeling like turning 30 crossing this hump and i'm thinking a lot about the past mm. you know what i mean entering a new decade i'm so excited i'm i'm like so ready but it's like nothing that happened to me in the past is real right w- w- or, or you or anyone because like What's only real is happening now. And like, I'm finding myself altering now, especially with the release of Beyond Skinwalker Ranch, the Mm. finale. I'm finding myself internally witnessing a change in how I even react to events that unfolded in my past. Whereas I used to be so depressed and, and suppressed and I mean, you know, suffering and all this and all that, that I've talked about a million times. Now I find myself just smiling. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, you truly can change the past. Yeah. But it happens now. And it happens with your perspective. And changing the future is so much easier. Oh, yeah. You know, because all you got to do you're, is just stop worrying. You're in yeah. control of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's that's ancient, ancient wisdom. Right. Like, like gurus and, and like they teach the only thing that exists is right now. Right now. You, yeah. You have no clue what's going to happen two seconds from now. And things that happened two seconds ago aren't happening right now. They, they, they don't exist anymore. The only thing that exists is literally the fraction of a second that you are constantly experiencing right now. Yes. I think about it like, I think (laughs) about it like the ultimate God consciousness is like this just omniscient being truly omniscient, meaning every, every speck that's like a little piece of dust on the little you know, back flab of every atom that gets up and goes to work every day to like mingle with other electrons and protons. 
You see what I'm saying? Like, kind of. Like, kinda. like, <laughs> like you know, a- atoms are, they, they, they're like us. They, they have jobs and, and, sure, and yeah. cells they and, fill a purpose. you know, they're, they're like, they're like conscious beings in yeah, some yeah, level. Yeah. I'm, I'm being facetious. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. They are. You know, I, I feel like the God consciousness is, is through every single particle of reality, through every sub particle is observing every event. But it's like there's this camera rolling that's like the live feed is recording everything that's presently happening now. And like we're the dummies. Not du- It's actually brilliant that we do this. We're the one writing all this stuff down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. A thousand years yeah, ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? What you're describing like, is awareness. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm awareness trying to get at. Right now awareness at is only ever always right now. And yes. we're so stuck on everything back then. And it's like. Oh, dude, I didn't study for my test tomorrow. Like, I'm freaking out. I'm freaking but out. But who did? <laughs> yeah. Did you? Yeah, I studied yeah. the morning of. Yeah. yeah but, oh, I just stayed up. But I'm just saying, like, we... <laughs> we I just didn't study. <laughs> we observe... Yeah. We observe this past and future thing. Right. Yeah. You know? It's so. exclusive to us. Right. It's, mm. it's exclusively like a human experience. Yeah. I don't even know that m- most animals do do that. I mean, they have they have memories for of sure. Course. They experience trauma the same way, but in a, right. they, they handle it better than we do. Mm-hmm. Like, um... You know, we won't like if we get hit, it'll traumatize us for 20 years. But at a certain point, animals will get they'll get conditioned, mm-hmm. but they'll like they'll grow. Yeah. Dude, in a better, more profound have a, way. Have a I seven feel. second memory. A goldfish literally forgets everything every seven seconds. Well, yeah. Like we should be like goldfish. Just some Ted well, Lasso. <laughs> some Ted Lasso stuff. But we have to acknowledge the past to move forward, too, though. You, you can acknowledge it without attaching any emotion to it. That I think sure. That, I think that is the significant thing because uh, may, uh, oftentimes it is vital to acknowledge the past, especially you have like to grow. you have to grow, especially like mistakes you've made yeah. or things you wish to grow from. Like it's not always a bad thing to look back or, or even look forward, but you just have to approach it with a level of detachment and peace. What really matters peace. is now. Exactly. Enjoy now. Yeah. And really. if you have to transmute your past yeah. in order to enjoy now, then handle that accordingly with no attachment to it. Just know yeah. that right now you're different. Every second of every day you are different than you've ever been. When you improve yourself now, the past and the future improve as well. Like it's, mm. it's, it's That's weird. It's like, it. it's like the thing that truly matters the most is just every day waking up and, and just trying to be better. When I say be better, it's like, you know, try to be nicer, try to be kinder, more compassionate, more compassionate. And, 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 and the way that that relates Eat healthier. Yeah. The way know? that re- like compassion, for instance, I think it's one of the most important things in existence. And when you work on yourself in the current and allow yourself to be more compassionate, you will treat your past experiences with compassion Yeah, and potentially yeah. heal from those things. Ideally, you know, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, you hold on to baggage from mistakes you made or from ways that you acted or whatever. But then if you learn compassion today, that has the potential to heal and forgive yourself for things that happened in the past. And so I love, you- I love the way that you put it, like focusing on yourself now, healing yourself now heals your past and future self. Right. That, that's, that's what's working for me. Yeah. You no, know, it, me too. Like, that's facts. That's awesome.